Hello and welcome back to the Tomarosa. We are on the road. Uh, we're actually on the way back to the farm from our accountant. It is tax season and uh, we have some time on our hands so we thought we'd talk with you. One of the questions we get quite a bit actually is, is why we decided to become dairy farmers and why we decided on the model of farming that we did. And so let's do that. Since my story goes back farthest, I figured I would go first. My family has been in the dairy industry since the 1940s and so that's what I grew up in. Uh, my grandpa was a milk hauler, my dad was a milk hauler, and I even did some milk hauling. Um, in fact, I've been trucking since I was two months old, according to my mom, on a milk truck. Growing up around dairies uh, of all sorts of different types, being a milk hauler, I kind of fell in love with dairy cows pretty early. And then in high school, I actually stayed on a, a farm that my family hauled for, for a little while and got to milk cows and drive tractors and, and do all kind of that fun stuff. And I decided that uh, I really liked the dairy industry and I was gonna continue in it. Many of our longtime viewers would be like, wow, you worked on a dairy in high school and then you joined the Coast Guard for 20 years, what happened? So I did join the Coast Guard uh, when I turned 17. I actually turned 17 in November I enlisted in December, and I was in boot camp by January. But anyway, that was uh, just mostly a stopgap measure because as milk haulers, you need a commercial driver's license and you can't drive interstate until you're 21. So I'm like, what can I do for four years uh, until I could uh, get my CDL? And well, four years happens to be the standard military enlistment. So I joined the Coast Guard and I loved it. And I, stayed in because I really loved it but I still love the dairy industry as well. Meanwhile uh, I was born and raised in eastern North Carolina and I had no dairy industry history. Our family was mostly uh, fishermen and you know subsistence farming. Uh, I decided to join the Coast Guard because of my love for the sea and wanting to be a navigator and I met Stacy, when we were both stationed in Wisconsin, which is America's dairy land. And he had this great passion for dairy farming. And that's how I kind of got into the dairy industry originally was through Stacy. So shortly after Virginia and I got together there in Wisconsin, we both figured out that we both had this entrepreneurial spirit uh, within us. And we, we were gonna have a business of our own someday. And over the years, it, it took a few different iterations. I won't go into all that, but one of the early ones was actually a cheese factory. We both love cheese. We, uh, I think one of our, our first dates was I took her to a cheese factory in Wisconsin, and we, and, and we learned the secrets of how string cheese is made. It was a hot date. It was a hot date. Uh, <laughs> so the, the, the first iteration was, was the cheese factory, and then uh, that kind of evolved into, well, if we want the highest quality milk, maybe we should have our own dairy farm to supply said cheese plant. And, you know, we started looking at uh, dairying, dairy farming, different breeds of cows. Our big change was when uh, we got stationed in Port Angeles, Washington, and uh, we got a chance to hook up with some uh, good dairy farmer mentors. Uh, I was in the Coast Guard as per usual. My ship I was on was in dry dock in Fairhaven, which is near Bellingham, Washington, in the northwest corner of Washington. And I stumbled upon a local dairy who was bottling their own milk. And that was very intriguing to me. And so I called them and they invited me up for a visit. And so I visited them by riding my bicycle 16 miles to their farm. And I had a really great time, I learned a lot, and they are super awesome. They are still our mentors, and they even gave me a ride home. But they uh, were friends with dairy farmers near where we were stationed at the time, which was Port Angeles, Washington, and they introduced us to them, and really introduced us to Jersey's 
once we got in touch with them we started helping out on the farm volunteering uh, pretty much if my ship was in port uh, at least one day a week I was waking up early and going to the farm to help milk and do chores and just learn about cows both of those dairy farmers had previously shipped their milk and now they were doing their own business where they were bottling one was pasteurizing one was raw milk that really opened up our mind the year 2010 was a very formative year for our dairy farm aspirations we had some good mentors we were getting into this idea we wanted to definitely have a dairy we found the 40 acres north of Chewila, washington it was just raw land that we could build up and do what we wanted to with it so yes we bought the land in 2010 and we decided that i would stay in the coast guard for another 10 years which seems like a huge amount of time, but it was a very deliberate decision, and it's definitely a decision uh, we don't regret. There was times when we were like, man, I just wish we could just start farming full time, but that 10 years gave us a good opportunity to plan, and we built up the farm as we went, so we minimized our debt load. The most important part of that 10 year period was just learning the land. Having the patience to put up with that long time frame gave us a lot of good information to help us be more successful in the long term. After we bought our land, Stacy was still in the Coast Guard, we were still moving around. We transferred to Astoria, Oregon in 2011, and that's where we got another great group of dairy mentors. Uh, one farm that we volunteered and worked on was a shipper to Organic Valley. Another dairy farm that we worked on was a shipper to Tillamook, which is a big regional um, dairy cooperative in this area. From those, we learned two different things. From the Organic Valley shipper, uh, we had never originally thought of being, you know, like a certified organic dairy. And we were fortunate to work on their farm because they had a family-sized dairy farm. And we learned about uh, different things with like cow health and managing a farm on a family scale and that allowed us to think hey you know we could do this you know we believe in the organic principles we like the management and we think it'll work for us so that was great on that side uh, but the Tillamook shipper they had a much larger dairy farm they were milking thousands of cows and uh, they were calving seasonally you know hundreds of calves so that let us see um, another side of the dairy industry but even though they were large, they were implementing some very forward-thinking ideas with their cows and their calves. They were doing uh, rotational grazing management, and they taught us a lot about scale and size, and also like business management and how to plan things. Uh, so that was one of the things people ask, well, how did you decide what size farm you're gonna have? Well, the land we bought was 40 acres and we decided we wanted to as much as possible have our herd graze and then also harvest our hay so we can reduce our uh, possible feed costs and that is the size and then for organic dairy it's because we had some really good mentors and we saw that that was something that would work for us from um, a farming method that we agreed with and that would help us on a marketing side to sell our products directly to consumers. So that's what we did. In 2018, we got four eight week old weaned calves and we raised them up into mama milk cows. We started milking in April of 2020. And we've been very uh, pleased with our small organic dairy farm. If you are the kind of person who just loves cows, which we are the kind of people who just love cows. It could be dairy cows, it could be beef cows. You just want to work with cows. And we're very happy that we're able to do that and make a living on our farm. And also have outreach and education and talk to others about the joys of working with cows, of having really good high quality dairy products, and working for yourself on your own farm. And you don't need a reason to love cows. You can just love cows. We do. Now that we have our first season under our belts, uh, there's a couple more videos we plan on doing about specifically our operations this year. Uh, we did a couple recently that if you haven't seen, you might be interested in. 
Uh, one was on drying off the cows and then another one on once a day milking. After this video, we want to follow up with why are we a seasonal dairy? And then we also want to do a video on the financial aspects of our small dairy. How did we do? Did we make money with a small dairy? And then we also want to do a video explaining what regenerative dairying is and how we fit into that. So those are all videos we have planned for the somewhat near future during this dry period when we have nothing to do. That's a joke. <laughs> oh, another we're not thing. milking, but we're still busy. Another one we were talking about was how uh, calf sharing. Oh yes, calf sharing, how that worked for us. It worked for us this year, it worked great. Well, don't tell them, they won't want to watch the video then. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. So those are all some videos we have coming down the pike. So if you like what you see, uh, make sure you stay tuned and uh, watch for those. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Tomarosa. Thanks for coming along on our long drive. We appreciate it.